Hi, welcome to a new session. Today, we shall deal with another concept of deviation from Mendelian genetics, the concept of polygenic inheritance. Polygenic inheritance. Okay. In the previous uh, session, we have we dealt with the aspect of pleiotropy. I hope you remember the aspect of pleiotropy. If you haven't gone through that, please subscribe the channel so that you won't miss any sessions, the future sessions as well. So in pleiotropy, we learned that one gene is showing many effects where we had looked into the classic example of the disease phenylketonuria. So one gene, many effects there. Today, the new concept polygenic inheritance means many genes controlling one trait. Okay, so polygenic. Poly means what? Poly means many. Genic here refers to genes. Okay, poly means many. So many genes controlling one trait. Many genes are responsible for controlling one trait. Pleiotropy, how was it? One gene, many effect. Here what is many? Genes are many. Polygenic. Many genes controlling one effect. So, this particular effect always happens in developmental processes. Okay, like, for example, development of one characteristic is the result of additive effect of many genes. What is that? See, in the pea plant that in mental uh, uh, portions that pea plant where what I have taken they have told you that pea plant is either tall or dwarf there was no intermediate height but you take the example of human beings human beings if you take the height as the trait you can see human beings of different heights not only height you take the skin color different shades you can find isn't it the hair texture different shades you can find different body complexion different types you can find so, there are certain traits which is not lying, which is not simply extremely high or extremely low. There are in between traits also. Such traits which forms the process of developmental process. So, those traits are actually not the product of one gene alone. One gene is not controlling such traits. There are many genes behind the control of such traits. Okay, so that many genes controlling a trait, that is polygenic inheritance. Let's take examples and make things more clear. See, here I have listed five examples. Skin color is an example for polygenic inheritance. Eye color, hair structure, body complexion, height. These are the various examples for which shows polygenic inheritance. That means these traits are not under the control of one gene alone, but it is under the control of many genes and it is the additive effect of these genes that results in these characteristics in a human body. So here, let me take the example of first uh, skin color itself. Skin color is controlled by three genes. I am just writing here. Gene 1, gene 2, gene 3. Three genes are responsible for skin color in human body. Okay. So, gene 1, as you know any gene is having two forms. So, gene 1 is also having two forms. I am writing it as capital A and small a. Gene 2 again has two forms. I am putting it as capital B, small b. Gene 3, capital C, small c. So, these are the three genes. And those are the alleles. In a human body, you know it is diploid organism. So, in a diploid organism, always there will be only two alle uh, one allele of a particular gene. Okay. Or two, sorry, two alleles of a particular gene deployed. So in the first case, first gene. So first person I am taking. This is first person. In the first person, I am taking 
both the alleles capital A capital A from gene 1 okay from gene 2 I am taking capital B capital B from genes the 3 I am taking capital C capital C I hope this is clear to you see for every gene there are two alleles so in this person all the three genes together only gives the skin color to this person. So this person will have all the three genes in his body. But for a particular gene, only two alleles will be there. So here I have taken a combination where all the capital letters, I have put like this, are homozygous. Here there is nothing like capital A is dominant over small a. There is nothing like that. Skin color, there is no domination, nothing like that. Okay, so we need not go for that racial discrimination and all. Let us forget about all those things. So here just understand, you have capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, capital C, capital C. So I have taken all the three genes. So gene A plus gene, sorry, gene 1 plus gene 2 plus gene 3. So in all these cases, they are able to produce skin pigments and so the person will have a dark complexion because A is producing, both, they are, both of them are equally producing the pigment. B also equally producing, C also equally producing. So the person, in this person's body all these three genes are highly functional so the person will have a dark complexion. Now next case. Second case I am taking. A second person. This person is having small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c. I am not putting plus sign here because usually we should not put. Just for you to understand only I have put here. So here small a, small a, small b, small b, small c, small c. They are less efficient in producing the pigment. But they are producing. But they are less efficient. So, if you take the total, the person will have a fair complexion. The skin color will not be dark because pigments are not produced so much as in this case. If you take the third person, third person I am taking, capital A, small a, capital B, small c, small b, capital C, small c. In this case, there is one allele which is highly producing but only one allele of A. So, gene 1 is producing but not like this. Gene 2 is producing but not like this. Gene 3 is also able to produce but not as effective as this person 1. So, in this case, third person will not be very dark, will not be very fair but will have a bit lighter shade. Lighter than this person but darker than the second person. Okay. Now if I am taking a fourth person. I am putting here capital A, capital A. Small b, small b, small c, small c. So in this case gene 1 is highly efficiently producing but gene 2 and gene 3 are not so efficiently producing. So the shade color will be more, I, I cannot use it here, it will be still lighter. I will use the word still lighter. Still lighter. Still lighter means lighter than person 3. So likewise, if you keep on changing the alleles of the three genes, the additive effect of each of these alleles is only deciding the shapes or the skin color of the person. So it is not that one gene alone is producing it. All the three genes are present in the body. Then for each gene where there will be two alleles present, depending upon the combination of the alleles present, the shade in the person's body changes. So this is an example of Many genes. Many genes controlling the same trait. What is the same trait here? Here I have taken the example of skin color. In the same way, 
you have many genes controlling eye color accordingly the shade of the eye changes you know some people they have uh, uh, very black eyeballs some of them are having blue some green some brown some brownish green some something like that so it, it is all depending upon the, the additive effect of the alleles of the genes present responsible for eye color so next is hair texture structure and texture you know different different types are there because there are different genes responsible and it is the additive effect of their alleles which is controlling the character so same same is the case with body complexion some person will be very thin some fat like that like that intermediate is also there height also i have told you in the beginning so here a new concept we have completed what is that many genes controlling the same effect what is the same effect is same trait one trait one trait is controlled by many genes many genes that is why the term polygenic so polygenic inheritance means the type of inheritance where many genes are responsible for controlling one particular character in the previous video i have told you there are uh, many characters that are controlled by one gene that is called as pleiotropy so if you want to know about that pleiotropy please subscribe my channel and uh, you can have it and in the next session i will come to how one gene is masking the other so far we have learned one gene two alleles one allele is dominating the other one now in the next session i'll come with how one gene is actually dominating the other so thank you for now